My name is Jason Boltz. I run three businesses currently, uh, Shady Peeps, University Sunglasses, uh, Visionary Lenses, uh, and Raven Optics. How do you define success? Um, for me, success uh, is defined by, um, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, um, I would say doing something that um, you love and that you can get behind and uh, connecting with people and giving, uh, for me at least, giving people uh, the opportunity to uh, do something that they love as well um, and growing that so creating kind of a community um, in business and, and having a positive influence uh, on the community outside the business so for me that's uh, obviously there's a monetary factor where making money is success as well but um, I think there's just a growing tide uh, and I include myself in that uh, growing tide of people that just define success as uh, what you create beyond what you make. So, yeah. Where did your inspiration come from? Um, initially, I, I'd have to say my mom. <laughs> so she she's always had kind of an entrepreneurial spirit of like, uh, you know, do your own thing, come up with an idea, uh, push forward and get behind an idea and uh, create value. I guess um, she was involved in a trucking company, helped start it up with her dad, so uh, 18 wheelers uh, up in Alaska. So she's pretty, uh, you know, inspirational in that way, just breaking into that industry even. Um, and then just uh, other people around me, um, I, I, I would say a lot of my inspiration came from seeing people that were unhappy in their jobs. Uh, so looking at that and saying, you know, what do I want to do with my future, with my time and resources and uh, and then going from there saying, all right, ideally, where do I want to end up? And, uh, and then, you know, ended up with running these companies and, and then just the encouragement you get when you start gaining traction and, and moving in that direction. How did you move from idea to something actually succeeding in the market? Um, testing the market, I guess. Uh, really just creating a, a, a quality product that I would want to use. Um, something that I, I said, all right, my target market is basically me at the time. Like... You know, I, when I first started, um, I was 24, when I first started kind of developing business ideas and testing them out, and, and I really wanted to create something that I could look at and say, you know, I would use this, and then, uh, so I, I would hand them out, it was the replacement lens company, um, so I, I, I had samples made, kind of went through that whole process, and gave them out to my friends, got some feedback. Um, I think feedback is crucial. Um, don't let it, you know, I, there are people that were negative about it, like this is never going to work. Uh, you know, just people that don't see the vision that you have. Um, so getting feedback, but also filtering that feedback and pushing forward uh, and getting the valuable um, parts of that, whether negative or positive. And then um, once you take that feedback and feel like you have a solid product, just take it to market. I mean, that's, uh, that's kind of my philosophy has been like, Create something really cool, take it to market, um, and then adjust as you get more feedback from a broader customer base, um, and you know create brand equity and value. Keep putting money back into the company has kind of been my uh, my philosophy. It isn't I'm not taking a lot out. It's just building up the companies um, so that you know they get more refined and better. But um, definitely creating something that's quality. Uh, getting feedback from people around you and then um, just persistence pushing forward and really trying to get your product out there, get it in the right hands, in the right sales channels, um, and uh, basically living and breathing your company for a very long time. Because <laughs> you have to be excited about it, even if no one else is, you have to convey that excitement like, and give someone, give those people like your potential, everyone's a potential customer, potential partner. Um, so connecting with those people and then casting that vision for them, like this company here, I can't tell you how many times people were just like colored crazy sunglasses, like who is going to buy that, uh, you know, and, and we went, uh, we're in, in a year, it's been just about a year now, we went from one university to 12. <laughs> how did you organize your team? Um, I took the approach of, uh, uh, I, I mean, a big reason I got into business and, and why I love it so much is that you, again, I can give people the opportunity to really uh, take their position and um, their skills, their skill set and, and passion and really run with it. And like, I don't really, I say, hey, this is my vision for the company. This is where I want it to be. 
Um, and then if there are very specific things that need to get fixed right away, I tell that. But I say, I want you to own this position. Um, be creative. Use all of your resources. Basically, use it like it's your own company in, in this area. Um, and and then I gauge the reaction from them. Like, you know, if they're like, oh, okay, you know, that sounds kind of cool. You can tell if someone has sparks with someone and if they're generating ideas. Uh, then I'm like, all right, I think this person would be good for the team. And then there's, you know, the next step of bringing them in and having them meet other people that I work with. Um, but my core team is actually, uh, the average age is probably 24. I've hired people that are coming straight out of uh, either an MBA program or I've been just out of undergrad for two years um, as my executive team right now. Um, and I really like just the energy you get out of that. Um, they're so hungry to be successful and and I, everyone's like, oh, the job market now is terrible. Well, it is, but if you give people an opportunity um, and they know how valuable that is and they see, again, the, the vision that you've cast for this company, um, you know, then, then they're on fire about it. Um, and then one other aspect just for me personally is like, I, again, we use our, our company as, as a way to benefit the community. And um, built into our bonus structure is uh, if we hit a certain number, you know, sales volume, the team goes to Africa and works at a sports camp that we sponsor um, for orphans. So it's a, yeah, it's a sports camp where uh, kids go there for a week to two weeks and learn, start learning a trade. Um, that they can then use, you know, help their community. And so if someone gets excited about that, like, you know, we, we do build in monetary incentives as well, but um, a big part of that is just if they're like, I cannot believe that's part of your company structure, that's awesome, like, I can't wait. And If you could have, yeah, what would you have done differently? Um, I, that's, for me, that's a very hard question to answer because I honestly have not looked back. Um, it, at this point in, in, in each business, it's very much a ramping period of like, I look back and there's nothing yet that I, I would take back. And that might sound arrogant, but really I feel like we've had a tremendous amount of success um, just for how old we are and, and what we're doing. And, and uh, I have, I'm really kind of the bootstrapping type, so I can't say I've spent an absorbent amount of money on one thing that I'd take back. Actually, no, I can. All right, I have a regret. <laughs> we, uh, for the sunglass company, you know, we were merchandising, kind of developing displays, custom displays that really stood out in, in retail locations because our product stands out, but we really want the whole brand to, to kind of speak to who we are, the exciting, you know, fan-based, like, check us out. So we put a bunch of money into, actually, University of Washington uh, industrial design students. They did an amazing job coming up with this custom floor standing display and um, it, it just ends up being one of those things where it looked incredible, but like production-wise, manufacturing, all that just ended up being an incredibly expensive endeavor. So right now we have one very, very cool prototype sitting in our office uh, that, that ran about a thousand dollars just just to have it cut and built. And, but the design it was an additional cost. So I guess for me it was a learning curve because we also were able to get another. Uh, display out of them that is now in 70 different retail locations and you know people love them so what makes a great entrepreneur I think I, I, I might know I don't know <laughs> I'll give you what I what I think uh, the, I guess the people that I look up to what I see in them um, and what again inspired me I guess again speaking to my mom and how she was just so energetic and passionate about the ideas she had and how she felt like they would add value to the community and people around her and she used that for like a just kind of a platform in a sense to help people and um, so I guess, I guess you have to have a heart for people um, because connections and relationships are so important when you're starting out um, even if you start out with a million dollars in your pocket that you can invest in your company if you can't get people behind it and people don't want you to succeed it's a lot harder to get off the ground and be successful. So being able to just form relationships, be empathetic, be, I mean, just relational. Um, and then entrepreneurs also have to have, in my belief, they have to have um, some leadership skills because <laughs> you're going to have to bring people in to kind of, you know, augment what you're doing, become a part of your team. Um, again, casting the vision is kind of the key phrase I use. You have to be able to inspire people. Um, 
So having that ability, uh, having the ability to work very, very hard um, and in the back of your mind always know like I'm creating value here, I'm, I'm doing this for a purpose, for a reason, that's going to pay off even if you're you know, not sleeping for two days and <laughs> everything seems like it's going crazy, just being able to ride out those, those waves and dips and enjoy the successes, that's the other thing too is you have to be able to step back and say, like, look what I've created so far, if only for a few hours and enjoy it, like enjoy it with people. Um, because I think a lot of people just get wrapped up in the go, 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 like new ideas. Entrepreneurs constantly are generating ideas and trying to push forward, which is great. But a lot of them get burned out, too, because they don't step back and say, you know, look what we're doing, like as a team. And they don't allow their team to enjoy that. And that's a big, um, I think it can be a big pitfall if you don't. You know, just yeah, enjoy what you've done. Keep pushing, and and you know your brain's always going. But but uh, yeah, be a good manager and and uh, you know, have fun. This is key too, so you can edit this. But surrounding yourself with people that um, I got in trouble for this a while ago for saying it like this, but I'll say it like this again. Um, but surrounding yourself with people that. Um, make up for areas where you fall short. So like recognizing what your weaknesses are and then addressing those. What habits. role did education have in your success? It's just more the, the social aspect of education for me I found the most valuable. Because I, I can't say I actually apply <laughs> a lot of what I learned in the classroom to what I'm doing now. Um, but just that interaction and uh, um, yeah. And then I guess when I went to the uh, entrepreneurship track it University of Oregon, when they call it, you know, I wasn't actually officially in the class, but um, kind of became a, uh, uh, I don't know what they even called it, but a, a student that was just there to, to work on the business stuff, and that was very valuable for me because, um, you know, just vetting a business plan, having a business plan, um, is something that, uh, for me at least, I, that's like my nightmare, is sitting down and trying to write out every single little detail and projections that are pulled out of nowhere, it kind of, you know, you can, your addressable market, all that stuff that's very important, but for me, like the first business I started, I went straight to market, no business plan, and confession, two and a half years later, I still have no business plan, um, but it's worked, I mean, you know, we've, uh, yeah, it's scaled and growing tremendously each month, um, but doing that for Shady Peeps, because it's a much more uh, complicated business model, um, was very important and just to get to where we needed to be in terms of like I'm going to speak specifics now but like licensing with different universities they needed a business plan they needed projections to see you know okay this looks like a viable um, business model and I guess it's powerful to me because now I always go back to that original plan when we're having ideas about you know new product lines or who we're going to partner with and that's kind of like alright this is our core um, it's constantly evolving based on new opportunities and all that, but um, I, I wouldn't have had that otherwise without going into that entrepreneurship track and, and without them kind of bringing me into the fold and, and showing me what that more structured, organized uh, part of our side of business looks like. So what is the most important question we did not ask you in your answer? All right, well, from uh, an entrepreneur standpoint, I would say uh, what is the level of commitment you're giving to this, you know, going from kind of a structured, if you're in the workforce or working for the man, uh, over to, all right, I'm going out on my own and doing this and trying to create something new out of basically nothing. Uh, and my answer is like, you live and breathe and become a part of what you're creating. And that's why you have to be uh, sold into it. Like you have to sell out on what you're doing. And that sell out's kind of a negative word to some people, but it really is, you know, you have to, <laughs> everyone around you wants to know like how it's going, what you're doing, uh, and wants to, really wants to be a part of like what's going on. If it starts being successful, which you hope it does, then everyone, you know, is kind of gets behind you in a, in a way. Because I think inside of a lot of, a majority of people is like, you know, I, I want to create something. I want to go out and create something of value, uh, inspire other people. So that becomes your life and it's it's not like work and and, uh, and personal life anymore it's just this kind of merger of the two that um, ideally you you it, it works out for the better because you love what you're doing the people around you love what you're doing and uh, it does affect your relationships I mean you, you get into a place where if you're if you're with someone you know married boyfriend girlfriend whatever um, they have to love what you're doing too or it's not gonna work because 
yeah. So I would say that, and then being willing to share the rewards of what you're doing. So not you, you, you can't just reap the benefits yourself and recognition and all that, but like spread that out amongst the people you love.